The fat trader finally got what he was after. He had been sitting in this bar for hours now, waiting for someone interesting to walk in. Preferably someone who had some good information on lucrative deals, but really, even just something that could entertain him was good enough. When the human walked in, he couldn't have been happier. You rarely meet humans in this cluster, after all. It only took the promise of a free drink to get the human to talk to him. And thus they were sat, the human so nervous looking the trader with excitement in his bulging eyes. So, he said, as he gave him his glass of beer, what brings a human this far from home? Oh, just some personal business. I have some promises to fulfill. Promises? The fat trader asked. He knew from the few short times that he had met these bipeds that they had a lot of foreign concepts. He didn't quite understand most of them. Yeah, promises. How do you explain it? When you make a promise, you say that you will definitely do something. As the human talked, he seemed to get a little more comfortable, yet his eyes still zigzagged around the bar like a prey animal checking its surroundings. When I say something, I also intend to do it. Why would you need a different way to say it? Because my species lies, my friend, the human laughed quietly. His black hair fell in front of his eyes. That I have heard of before. It seems unnecessarily complicated, if you ask me. Do you humans have more of these, what do you call it, concepts? I think the word you are looking for is myth. It's basically something most humans pretend to believe in, a shared lie of some kind. Why would you believe in these things if they are lies? It seems asinine. Realising this might offend his table guest, he quickly added, I hope you don't take that the wrong way. I am just not wired to understand this. No problem, brother, you can't fight biology. His voice was deep and reassuring, but trembled a little. Humans living together in big groups had to invent these shared myths to effectively get things done. Everyone in our societies has a different opinion. You guys are a bit more uniform, so you don't need all those silly little lies. So, what are some more of these myths? The fat trader asked. He wasn't particularly fat for his species, but anyone else, he seemed like a slug. His legs were barely visible under the thick layers of meat. Seeing as no other species could pronounce the name of this slug-like creature, they just named him the fat trader. Hmm. We humans believe we are connected somehow. If a member of our clan gets attacked, we believe the clan has the shared responsibility to go and help them. The closer the person is to a human, the fiercer they will protect them, even if it costs our life. That seems sensible, I suppose. Humans aren't particularly strong, no claws and all that. Perhaps you can find strength in numbers. See? You get it, the human explained. It is quite straightforward. We protect those we consider ours, and we get protected by them. Isn't it dangerous to do this every time someone is threatened? Stressful, too. I'm not sure I could manage. The trader seemed genuinely impressed. Surprise, we have missed that too. The human seemed a little too animated about this subject. His energy was radiating through the room. Humans believe that everything will work out in the end. If you just keep going, you'll get there. We keep the hope high and expect our efforts to deliver good results. You actually believe that? Most of my children are already smarter than that. The enormous body of the trader shuddered with laughter. He didn't even hide how stupid he thought these humans were anymore. Oh no, it's a lie. We all know that. Then why say it? If you repeat it enough, you'll start to believe it. And why quit if you believe everything will be okay? It reduces the stress severely. Hmm, interesting. What if you can't protect your clan anymore if the damage has already been done? That's where it gets interesting, actually. Some believe our clan members will go to a perfect place after death. Sadly, we can't reach them when we're still alive. I personally, however, don't believe in all that crap. He paused. We also have the myth of vengeance. The human lent a great growl at us to this last word. A bit nervous, he didn't quite know if he should continue. Vengeance? The slug asked impatiently. Explain. The belief that you can right a wrong by doing unto aggressors what has been done unto you. An eye for an eye. It doesn't really work. As far as I can tell, it only makes the situation worse. The slug has grown bored by now. These moves seem pointless, unimportant. So he decided to change subject. Interesting. Thank you for indulging me in these wrong concepts. Now I must ask again, what brings you here? The human looked down. His emotions hidden deep within. He responded calmly, yet the tone was clearly an aggressive one. Two years ago, some fat slimy bastard kidnapped my wife and children during a raid. I came here looking for them. The atmosphere at the table dropped. Almost as if a hole in a ship had suddenly depressurized the room. The fat trader was smart enough to realise this wasn't good news. Carefully, he prodded further. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you find them? Yes. In the logs of the mine, some plants away from here. They're dead. 
I also found the name of the person who sold them to that horrible place. His voice was shaking. So he put his right hand above the table. A gun pointed at the trader. Immediately, several guards sitting at nearby tables jumped out of their seat, hand in holster. This does not seem like a smart idea. It's one against six. Put your gun away and I'll forget this. One against six? <laughs> I just explained how humans always protect each other. Did you forget that already? The slug's bulging eyes can see it now. Everywhere in the bar, humans have been secretly positioned in spots where they can react immediately. As soon as his guards are sprung into action, they had two. And they outmatch the guards. Most of the slug's hirelings stood frozen as ice, feeling the human blasters pointing in their backs. Even if you kill me, you won't leave the planet alive. The port authorities will not stand for unnecessary violence. You and your little friends don't stand a chance. The human smiled, deviously, his yellowish teeth bare, knowing it was all going exactly as he'd planned. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm sure I'll be alright. He winked in the most arrogant way possible. The tension quickly kept mounting. This was happening. This was not good. What is this then? Vengeance? You said yourself that that doesn't help. You have nothing to gain. Vengeance? The human asked, as if it hadn't even come to mind. In silence, he climbed up the table and sat down on there, right in front of the slug. Now at the same eye height, he put his gun right up to his bloated forehead. The trader signaled to his men not to act. No, this isn't vengeance. If I wanted vengeance, I would have captured you and all those you hold dearly. I would have slowly murdered them in front of you, cutting them open, one by one. Then, when they are all dead, I would torture you. I would piss in your wounds. I would keep going till you beg for death. And even their little laughter. Then I would dump all of your blood-covered corpses in some hole in a planet no one has even heard of. And leave them there to rot. The human spat the words out, his face red-hot with anger. But I like to think I am better than that. So no, this is not vengeance. Scared and panicking, the fat trader looked him in the eyes and asked, Then why are you doing this? If this isn't vengeance, what is it? This. Oh my, I forgot to tell you about this myth. How stupid of me. He sat his left hand against his forehead, as if to laugh at his own stupidity. But his eyes were unamused. Determined. He continued. This is not vengeance, my dear slave trader friend. This is justice.